What is going on guys, today I'm going to show you how to do some overlay detail using sort of just overlays, you throw it on top of your materials and you get a little bit more detail to them. So if we look at this table, this is actually quite a simple material, it's just um, sort of a plastic material, a bluish, a very washed up blue colour with quite a um, high roughness, or should I say low roughness, yeah low roughness to get it having some shine to it. So if we look closely though, I've got fingerprints all over it. This is just done through a tileable texture and just one that's sort of a fingerprint. So I've got this texture for a website called, I believe, Polygon. And it's here, Polygon. So if we look at Polygon, um, this you can sign up to for free, well, for free trial. And I've just signed up for free. I've grabbed about 10 tileable textures I wanted and I'm probably not going to use it again. So I jumped into here and I got a fingerprints sort of texture. So if you scroll down, you can find some of the fingerprints, and um, they're not the only good ones. And um, they've got some really nice ones here. They've got um, some nice sort of like residue ones. Um, but yeah, we're going to use one of the fingerprints ones. So I've already got it in the um, in my engine. So I'll just use the one I've got in there. So if we bring that back down, and come into here, we can see I'm using this one, and this is a nice tileable texture. It works fine when you tile it. So um, I'll start setting up a material now. So if we just right click that and say create material, it throw it in there for us. Let's bring that up and we disconnect it. And we keep that over here. So um first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our basic colour. Mmm I'll make it sort of yellow. And I'm gonna make it look similar to the table I've got already, but you can use it for other things. It doesn't have to be a shiny material, you can have quite a rough material or even a texture, you don't have to use a blank a plain colour, but I'm just gonna show you sort of the simple way to do it. So um yep, connect that up. Then we want to change our roughness. I want it to be pretty shiny. Well, that's gonna be changed anyway in a minute. Um and that's pretty much all we're gonna do for the start of that. So now I'm gonna move this down here. And we're gonna do a directional mask. At least that's what I call it. So if we go vertex normal and we get a mask for that. Oh, and we go component mask. We connect that up. We put blue on that. And if you don't know what that does, whoops, because I've, I've shown that in some other stories. But if you don't know what that does, that basically you will just select the top of an object. So no matter where that object's placed, no matter where you rotate it, it will just affect the top of it. And the reason I just want it to affect the top is because when people touch things, they'll touch the top of it. They don't usually touch other parts of it. It's the same with dust. Dust settles at the top of something, so you're only going to want it to sort of affect the top of it. So that should be fine. Then we're going to get a multiply. Multiply that. And you could connect that straight up if you really wanted to. And if we get a square, there you go, we'll be able to see. Because obviously on the side of the squares, it won't be affected, but on top it will. And I'm just previewing it. Can go like that, or what I usually do is I sometimes get a contrast node, and I'll connect that up, and I'll plug that in, and I'll usually convert this parameter to a parameter, so to say. Then when I turn that up, oh god, we'll be able to sort of contrast it a bit more. And in this case, because it's such a dark image, I'll even add a add in here, maybe put that to about 0.3 and connect that up to there then start contrasting it a lot and we'll be able to separate that detail out a bit better maybe about there yeah that looks pretty good then we're gonna use the texture coordinate to put that in hold U and left click just connect that up make it about I don't know 8 by 8 depends oh god maybe too much it depends on your object at the end of the day if your object has a big texture sheet you're going to want to make it maybe tiled by two. If it's got a really small texture sheet, you're going to want to tile it a bit more. All right, so after that's connected up, um, we should be able to just plug that into the roughness. So if we put a lerp in here, so L left click, we want the black places to be the shine that we already have. So I believe that's A, we'll see in a second. And we want the white places to be white. So I'm gonna come into here. I'm gonna set that up to another multiply. I'm just gonna multiply the detail out. Oh, preview that. 
If I set that to zero, whoops, we'll see that separate out. So we're going to want that to be maybe a point one instead. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Connect that up to our roughness. And we should, if I move a light around, you can kind of see it on here. It's a bit too bright. You can kind of see it. But we also want to give the uh, smudges a bit of color, uh, maybe some brown or something. So we'll get another lap up here. And make that a free vector, a free constant. Constant vector. Make that maybe a slight brown color. Get that up. Okay, you can see the smudges on there a bit better now. Click apply. And you can turn up this multiply, just make it stronger and stronger. I mean, if we made that like 10, it'd be really separated out. And we can even connect a constant up to that and convert to a parameter. And we could call this like strength. And I'm going to set to 2. Yep, click apply. Uh, minimize that. Oh, that minimized the whole thing. Hey, look, it's my desktop. And uh, bring it back up. I think he's in here, there you go. And I believe I have a plane in the scene. Yep, I'm just going to throw the material onto this plane so we can see what it does. And as you can see, we have some of that detail. If I move a light around it, you see some of that detail works all right. And it's quite tiled. Um, you can see that's quite duplicate, but on certain meshes, it'd be fine, like on this. You can't really tell it's tiled. But yeah, and that's pretty much how you set up just an overlay map. And you can use anything for that. You can use a um, scratch one and make it so it separates the metals out. Because when a, because most metals are painted and it's got like a plasticky reflection. But as soon as you scratch it, you see the metal underneath and you can separate that out using these masks. So yeah, that's just um, how to set up a basic overlay. I hope this helps anyone who didn't ask this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And bye-bye.